Hello to all our viewers. My name's Farah, the webinar coordinator. Thank you for tuning into our digital ship webinar and we hope you're having a great start to the day or the, or the afternoon. Today, we're going to be discussing an electronic logbook for 2021 with our guest speakers from Raytheon Technologies, Andre Povilight, who's head of business unit partners and products, and Volker Wenzel, who's the technical marketing manager and professional mariner. In case you have any questions about the topic, we'll be keeping the Q&I section throughout the session open, which you can find at the bottom of your screen and type in your queries. And we'll answer your questions later on. Our host, founding editor of Digital Ship, Carl Jeffrey, will explain more. OK, so we're going to talk today about electronic logbooks on ships. So nearly all ships have got their paper logbooks, which are filled in by hand, such as the deck logbook, the engine logbook, the Marpole related books. Now, I'm guessing it's quite an easy question if we say, should we be having paper logbooks in 2021? We'd say no. So. There's quite obvious example advantages of electronic logbooks. You can have data added automatically. People can fill them in from their cabins or anywhere on the ship. There's no problems or errors from reading and transcribing handwriting. We can have digital systems which remind people if they leave gaps in the logbook. You can have systems for senior crew members to approve an entry. You can send the data to cloud servers for storage so it never gets lost. You can have uh, basic checks done by computer. The data can be available to anybody in the company. There have been uh, corruption concerns sometimes with logbooks that uh, people say that the, the fuel being reported is less than what was, uh, or you're reporting more fuel than you actually loaded and there's a cash going to the, the crew. So if you've got electronic systems, you can spot problems like this or at least not worry about it. But there's also good reasons for still using paper. Some of the regulations require it. It's easy for anybody to see it. They don't need passwords. And if you've ever lost important data in your life, maybe you're going to think, yes, paper is much safer. That's probably lots of small hotels or dentist surgeries, and they're still using their bookings on paper for this reason. So what we're going to talk about today, it's not the first time we've ever talked about moving logbooks onto electronic, onto electronic systems, but perhaps this is the one that's going to be successful. Our speakers today are Andre Povilite, who's head of the business unit Partners and Products with Raytheon Anschutz and uh, Volker Wenzel, who's technical marketing manager with Raytheon Anschutz. Uh, Volker has worked on ships himself for nine years and he's written a book about radar. So as usual with the webinars, we're gonna have a presentation for about 25 minutes, then we should have lots of time for questions. We've got a few polls. So I'm expecting that we'll generally agree that electronic log books are the right direction, but we can talk about all the challenges we see with them and uh, how we get over them. So got a question for you before we get started. Um, to get you thinking about logbooks and if you'd like to write the answer into the chat box when did you think the first logbooks have been seen on board ships so if you'd like to put your estimate in the chat box do you think it was in the 1800s or the 1700s or the 1600s if, uh, if uh, you see there's a Q&A and a chat at the bottom so uh, there we go got a few answers already 13 12 1500 and uh, anybody else want to put in an answer before we start I think I uh, need a bit of a warming up. Oh, 1100, very good. Okay, one more answer, then we'll 1400, 1000, 1750, 1600. There we go. So it looks like the average is about uh, 1600, maybe not. Okay, so we'll uh, pass on to Andre, who's going to give the opening talk. Thank you. And also give you what he thinks is the right answer. You're on mute at the moment. So. All right, um, also welcome from my side. Thank you very much for the introduction, Carl and Farah. Uh, that was a very nice um, a summary of, of the topic. Um, yeah, so I, I saw um, uh, your, your guesses and um, I, don't, I don't have the um, exact answer um, um, for you. There were a few uh, people that um, had um, earlier dates than, than we have uh, traced it back. So our conclusion so far when we looked in the history was uh, really the, um, the area of the Portuguese uh, explorers in the 14th and 15th uh, century. And they um, had already um, things uh, not called logbooks, but uh, similar. And uh, we also know from history 
um, 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 Christopher Columbus, um, when he um, discovered by accident um, um, today's United States, he also had uh, logbooks uh, on board, but unfortunately only uh, parts of it uh, survived uh, until now. Um, by the way, um, the, the picture um, um, is a logbook from uh, 16. 15 from the very famous navigator and explorer uh, William Baffin, and it can be found in the uh, British uh, Library. Uh, again, if you have um, um, really facts about earlier days, we would really appreciate that just um, uh, for our heart uh, to, to see, um, because history in our in our industry is, is very interesting. So um, I suggest we leave history and uh, come to today. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, basically our topic today is the, yeah, probably the most touched tool in, in the life of a navigational officer uh, during his watch. And we would like to take you <clears throat> on a journey really to follow uh, the mega trend um, from paper to digital. And yeah, that's what we're doing today in the presentation. So on my first vessel, um, it was uh, 2005, the container ship Cap Finisterre, quite small comparing to uh, these ones at the moment, 2000 TU, we navigated on paper. And now ACTIS, I would say, is, the, is, is standard. So just everybody talks about digitalization, but looking how we document our operation on of, and the navigation of the ship, we still do it on paper. So every hour, every two hours, the, the mate notes down the, the information just out of um, the sensors. So the data is there. So I'm, I'm, I'm really wondering why, why it's still like this, because the data is there in a digital format as you can see it in this example. Andre, you have to open. Yeah, that. okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we, we don't bore you with 120 slides of PowerPoint. Um, at the end of the short presentation, uh, we also um, show you um, our um, yeah, product in a live demonstration and Volker um, will guide us as through. Yeah, please go ahead. To bring up poll aid for our so we've got the uh first question is a uh, pick one which do you think is the most important logbook on board for are you going to bring the poll up there we go is it the deck logbook the engine logbook marpole related books or something else so if you just like pick one we'll wait a few seconds for the answer oh should we see the answer for off. So we're just stabilizing the answers right now. Okay. They're still coming in. Ah, okay. So most of you answered the deck logbook. Can you show the answers for the thing to there we go. Pass back to Andre and Volker. Okay, yeah, that's exactly also our um, perception. Um, the deck logbook is really the central book um, yeah, for all the um, operations. Um, and that was also why we um, focused in the beginning on, on the deck logbook. So, um, and so the crowd intelligence, uh, I'm, I'm very lucky, I have to say, um, is with us. Um, so um, that was really good information. Um, but also, we also saw from the from the poll um, that the other logbooks are also uh, important. So that's that's also a message from that. Okay, a bit of um, yeah, a bit of um, sharing um, of our journey. Um, we um, have an innovation space uh, founded in 2019. It's in Kiel in our facilities. 
Um, you know, we have around 600 employees. And uh, um, there was an idea to um, build up a space um, where we provide money and time to our employees uh, so that they can spend time on innovation apart from our standard research and development uh, activities. So the idea was um, employers, employees uh, pitch their ideas. Um, and then we have an intense selection process over um, a certain period of time. And finally, uh, the electronic logbook um, um, or e-log as we call it, qualified as the winner in our first series in 2019. And then from now on, um, we realized it and we are now ready by end of this month um, um, to sell it uh, to, the, to the broad market. As you can see from the pictures, it was uh, a really a proof. It was uh, pre-COVID because um, when, when was the last time that you have seen so many people at, uh, at one space? So um, yeah, um, it was quite, quite interesting to see uh, this uh, energy in, in the room when, when the people were pitching and introducing the idea. So one of our principles in this innovation space um, was really, if there's anybody who has a better expertise in a certain area, um, we, are, we do not want to reinvent the wheel. So that's why we really want to work with experts, with partners in a partnership, um, in a really in a deep collaboration. And that's why um, we have looked in the, in the market and we have approached and onboarded Formularos as one of our central partners for this product. Um, um, I believe many of you know Formularos because it's uh, probably the most um, recognized um, logbook uh, company uh, in the world, at least to our view, and they are covering really the, uh, so much uh, information and knowledge about um, the, um, logbooks uh, of any kind, and they, they help us um, improving um, uh, the, the product. And uh, together with, with Race and Anschutz, I mean, we are on board of over 30,000 ships. Uh, we exactly know um, what are the requirements on a bridge um, in terms of certification, um, for example, we also have um, yeah, a worldwide sales and service network, and we formed a team together. And um, yeah, it's really um, a, a good partnership. And uh, together, we brought um, the idea forward. So <clears throat> let's get back to logbooks in, in precise. Is, is there a problem? We said uh, logbooks exist since hundreds of years, for sure. So. Um, if you if you look on these uh, pictures on on the right, you can easily find any 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 mistakes or false corrections, and uh, not properly um, not properly filled in fields or what we don't know maybe even uh, mistakes. So we can say that manual entries often lack of consistent quality, and. One of the, the reasons is, of course, that the quality depends on the person who writes, on the time of the day, on the workload, and on the situation, on, on the bridge. So if you look or if you talk about quality, the quality is, 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 is hard currency against third parties. If you have um, a conflict situation, the logbook is the is the line where you can trust, uh, or we should trust. So um, I have one example which you can easily Google. It's uh, the Galicia Greca. Uh, Greca. Um, they paid one and a half million dollars for improperly filled logbooks. So quality of entries is a topic. But there's also another aspect. Um, analog data is useless in a digital world. These, um, there's a lot of information in the, in the logbook. And to get it out, for example, to the company, it's totally inefficient and or error prone to uh, make it manually, to put the data manually into Excel pages or even photographing the logbook pages, what is for me a surprisingly common practice uh, on board of ships. So as long this uh, data, digital data, has to be transferred by hand, the, the merits of modern IT systems 
or digital reporting tools cannot be fully realized. And to say it one more time, the data is there. The data is there and the, um, the missing information, so the, the, the operation of, of uh, the acts of an officer on the bridge, um, also, of course, need to be uh, put in this uh, data stream. And if you take the logbook, there's everything inside. And if you digitalize the logbook and transfer it in a, uh, to the company and put it in their IT systems, you have the full information of navigation and operation of the vessel. Okay, so if you want to bring up poll B for R. So uh, why would you use digital logbooks? So now we're sort of exploring the different drivers why you might want to have a digital logbook. So um, you might you might want to pick all of these. Farah, can you bring up poll B now? Um, we're having a few technical glitches oh, okay. right now. Um, so let me just try and relaunch the poll right now. I do apologize, everyone. Hang on. Should we try in a few minutes, see if it works? Okay, maybe we'll uh, come back to this one, should we? <laughs> see <how> Zoom problem is. <laughs> Go back to Volker and Andre. Uh, okay, so we'll just proceed and we will take this question later. <laughs> um, no problem at all. So uh, let's, have a, uh, let's have a look on the solution. We talked about problems. We provide a solution. Um, we have the e-log, so-called e-log. That's the electronic logbook of Raytheon Anschutz. And um, as you can see here on the slide, we have, um, or we can, you can operate our solution, our e-log, um, on uh, PCs, tablets, or um, smartphones, and. The e-log provides functionalities beyond traditional logbooks. It's not an Excel file which you fill in. You can, um, you have autofill functions, filter functions, search functions, link, export, plausibility checks, and alarm function, to name a few. So, in my opinion, the logbook will go the same journey, same way as the Actis did, um, or the paper chart did two actors. So my expectation is in a few years, there will nobody um, question an electronic logbook as it is done at the moment, surprisingly. So the e-log provides secure logbook data at a consistent high quality and also improves efficiency on board processes. And in the end, to make it let's say as the icing on the cake, um, it's a significant step toward paperless shipping. Here on the slide, I just want to give you an idea how it looks technical wise. We have, um, or the, the e-log is running on a gateway PC. It's a small box, small PC. If you look on the picture on the left, the red arrow, arrow is uh, pointing on the small PC in the last corner of this uh, shelf. Um, it is a real installation on one of our test uh, ships. So let's say this gateway fits in every bridge in every corner. We need as an input, of course, power supply. And depending on the uh, system on board or your or your decision how you want to use it, um, we need uh, AIS input or um, a connection to the integrated bridge. The user uh, get um, or the user interface is uh, done via um, PCs or tablets or smartphones, like I said. They are connected via the ship's Ethernet or the onboard Wi Fi. And now I'm almost on the end of my, of my presentation and I will just let you through a summary of our logbook. And I will try. Yeah. So I hope you see my laser pointer. 
So first of all, let's see it as foundation. There's a standard for logbooks. The standard since 2019. And the e-log is um, compliant to that standard, which leads to a broad flag state acceptance. For example, we uh, are approved by the German flag. Let's go to the center. The, to ensure tamper-proof uh, tamper and traceable entries, we rely on blockchain technology. Blockchain technology is, to our understanding, uh, just made for this kind of usage, this use case. We reach full transparency by personal user accounts and role-based access and approval workflow through all command levels. The automated uh, data a sensor feed provides continuous documentation and elimination of errors, especially in high workload situation. And keep in mind, high workload situation often go with high documentation load. But of course, you can also put in all traditional logbook entries by hand there to minimize um, errors or failures we have plausibility checks included by using a cloud solution global data access read read only of course is possible so this provides uh, the owner information in real time and accessible to his data independent on the situation. This, in fact, connects the logbook as a tool to the digital world. And to get it on the point, the customer may benefit by less operational risks, thanks to a legible and complete and consistent entries by high quality documentation, which is always under the control of the owner. And finally, by less effort and cost in managing logistic of paper logbooks. Okay, very good. So we'll try the, uh, the poll B question again. If uh, Farah, you want to bring that up about uh, why would you use digital logbooks? And then maybe we can do the poll C after that. There we go. So the, the purpose here, we're trying to see what's the uh, biggest reasons you use digital logbooks. You may want to pick every single one of these <laughs> to see all apply, but you uh, check, check as many as you want. So uh, digital logbooks reduce cost because you're not posting paper or printing paper. You can get better data quality. The data is more available in the company. You can have a reduction of risk, maybe because uh, people are more aware of what's going on. Perhaps it's less stressful because people enjoy it more. It's not like a task, something they can do in their, in their evenings or just fit in whenever they want to do it. And it makes a more attractive working because uh, it's something you can just do by placing a few clicks rather than handwriting. So uh, you can select as many that you think would, uh, would, would push you to use digital logbooks. Are we ready to bring the answers up for all? Well, there we go, right. So just hold that there while we give that a good read through. So. Attractiveness for employees is the least popular data, data quality. Data quality is the most popular data availability. It's also the most popular. Um, Andre and Volker, do you want to give some thoughts on those answers before we go on? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm surprised um, also about the cost issue, but because um, my conclusion from this is, um, okay, that everybody knows that um, a digital solution might, might also come with a cost, but also with benefits. So that's why, I interpret uh, the data um, cost is important, but um, but it's but there's a need to have a good quality of data and also the access to the data, which then leads to also risk reduction and and it comes with uh, side effects like um, like um, for um, um, employees, for example, and reducing stress. So um, totally makes sense for what, to my opinion, what we see here. Yeah, should we try poll C now then? For our, for, uh, the problem with Zoom is not cancelling the first poll before getting into the next one, but uh, oh, there we go. Very good. So this is a, 
you know, we had this idea that electronic logbooks you can do on your mobile phone wherever you are. You don't have to go to a specific place as a part of a routine and do it. So uh, this is just one, one, one you can choose. So do you think uh, in the future we'll still do logbooks on the bridge as part of our formal work, or do you think we'll do them from the engine room, from the cargo decks, from the bunker station, wherever we are with the... Uh, so I guess if you have to read something, you can just type it in wherever you're reading it from rather than just write it on paper and read type it into the logbook, I guess. Have we got the results now for all? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I suppose that's a common sense answer, I think. <laughs> and any thoughts, Volker and Andre, on this? That is quite a clear answer. Um, um, so that's the future. We, we don't document uh, somewhere in, in a central place. We do it just right. Uh, yeah, like it's uh, set here on the cargo deck, for example, or the bunker station and so on. And of course, by multiple access. So um, or even the master and uh, the mate can do their documentation at the same time. It's no problem. One addition to that, uh, Volker. So um, um, the good thing about this is you can do it according to your preference on the bridge or elsewhere, but it's not uh, um, either or. Um, so it's um, it's to the preference of the um, of the crew where they want to write uh, the logbook. It give, just gives the flexibility, yeah. And of course, the company how they decide how it has to be done. Too. Okay, and um, that's our last slide. Um, let us before we go into the. Um, in the live product demonstration, then I think it becomes also more clear what the electronic logbook um, um, is in detail. And let us conclude for now. Um, interestingly, there's, there's a problem with paper logbooks, even though they have um, been used uh, for such a long time, um, just for the case, uh, one of the cases Volker has presented. But uh, good news is also there's a solution, um, which is um, available with us. And um, yeah, I'm encouraging you, uh, for example, for shipping companies, um, if you want to test the product, please uh, contact us. But uh, there might be also um, other people in the room that uh, see some uh, interest, for example, for potential collaboration, or um, also please uh, be invited uh, to contact us. So now I'm giving over uh, to Volker for the, um, for the demonstration. So, um... Now we just switched over to our uh, demo. And uh, this is um, an online demo, which was um, about the interface is the same. So we use a browser-based solution um, for our e-log. So the, the interface, what you see here is, is the real interface, what you get when you buy the product. So that's the login screen. And as I said, the um, the login uh, the, the the access is um, personalized. So I have a user called Frank, and of course he has a password. Oh. And now you see the home screen. Sorry, and. Uh, on, on the top, right top, you see, for example, that we have a AS connection and a connection to the gateway computer and two alarms. In uh, the first row, you see the current status of our logbook. So we have a bell book and a deck block book at the moment. Other will come, of course. And um, just for explanation, um, the deck log, bell book and the deck log book, um, they have the same entry possible possibilities behind um, because the precise use of the bell book is quite different on various ships. So it's up on user's decision, how it use, the, the, uh, what is going in the bell book, what is going in the deck log book and so on. We have a so-called noon report function to standardize uh, the, the noon report. Then um, there are vessel particulars and uh, crew list informations and settings, of course, 
like the user management. And uh, in the end, for example, we have a user manual in the app. We are at the moment logged in as master, therefore we see all tiles, but depending on the role of uh, the, access, the access role, uh, some tiles are uh, not, it cannot be seen and cannot be operated. So let's have a look in the deck log book. As you can see here, um, we have uh, some entries uh it's coming from the system uh, the author here on the on the right side is uh, the sys, uh, is uh, sm which means system so every hour um at the moment um uh, navigation and the weather entry is going in the logbook let's just open one we take our last one from 1100 this is uh, don't wonder is uh, German time, so local time at the moment here. So um, here we see um, there was an entry, um, took the gyro heading at the moment, a rate of turn, a speed, and so on. And um, at the moment, it's showing in the deck log book. Let's maybe you might wonder there are some hooks and crosses. This is the approval. So um, the entries until nine o'clock were approved by chief mate and master. So uh, there's approval um, uh, workflow. And after the approval is done, it's like the signature and uh, changes after this cannot be done. To finalize this uh, page, there down there, there's uh, one uh, buttons. Um, one is uh, the export button for Excel and one for PDF. So you can export these entries easily um, ex uh, as Excel to work with it or as PDF if you have any um, problems might be with some uh, port state, which is uh, doing strange uh, questions. So you can export it and by PDF and print it out and sign even every page if this might happen. But uh, the main function is Excel because Excel as a standard format, everybody can, can work with that and can further use it. So let's have some, it just shows some, some entries. I pressed on the plus button to make a new entry. And um, of course, we have to take over the watch, for example. We take, take the watch, watch handover, take over the watch. We take over the watch from John Doe, for example. And that's me at the moment. I'm, I'm taking the watch, so I'm the officer on the watch. We could uh, put a lookout and the helmsman and the role of the author is at the moment master and we save it and there you see there's a new entry take over the watch from John Doe officer on the watch Frank Worsley author of the role master then we take another typical example for example pilot and there we have the plus pilot on board, we take the name, we name him Miller, it's coming on port side, we save. So pilot Miller on board. And just to show a uh, functionality here, pilot off is a, a, here is a link function, you can press on the link and get directly transferred to the pilot off function. And when we save this one, the pilot is off. So we have a link function. And this link function, of course, you can find in other uh, entries as well, Anchorage, um, anchoring, uh, and uh, mooring, and so on. Just one more 
entry uh, in, in Mooring, I want to show just for, um, for example, we are approaching Kiel and passing one uh, uh, mark, and we passing Lighthouse Friedrichs Ort. You can uh, write here anything what you want on the starboard side, save. And now there's a entry passing lighthouse free short on the starboard side. And pretending I did a mistake, we just correct one. And uh, we did it on port side. And there you can see on the right side, there's a change history. At 11.35, the original was done by Frank Worsley, which is me. And we have now an amendment or currently editing again, Frank Worsley, or if another author would do this, the other author would be seen here. And in, uh, in the record list, you see here a small plus, so there's a change in the entry. And last, what I want to show you is the free entry function. So we name it, for example, deviation, uh, deviation cause of distress of Titanic. We save this one and you can see there's an entry and uh, this whole uh, page is searchable. So when you use the search function, you can, for example, type in Titanic and then this entry is there or deviation and then all entries with deviation as a word in the entry you can find. So that's the end of my uh, presentation. And now I have to stop my sharing. Oh. So yeah. Move on to the questions now. Yep, you yeah. to, yeah, okay. So we've got we've got a uh, thirteen questions and twenty three minutes, but uh, a lot of them incredibly uh, technical. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna. No, I was just looking through. So um, Walid Mustafa is asking about the uh, cybersecurity resilience plan. By the way, we'll share the, this talk on uh, YouTube afterwards. Um, Alexander is asking, have you uh, any customers that use it? Um, and as Riding Lear is asking about certification to ISO 21745, John Owen is asking, is e-logbook not a voyage data recorder on steroids? And my favorite question, Natarajan Yaga Desihan. So I looked him up on LinkedIn, General Manager of Operations at OMC Shipping. He's saying, uh, I think he's saying, so uh, just because we can send more data, are we going to send more data, which isn't necessarily useful for everyone because the, the paper logbook at least forced people to limit the amount of data they're sending. <laughs> like, same thing that people say, well, it's good we had telex, people were forced to think about what they were sending in the telex days. Now they, do you want to, um, I don't know, maybe they're quite technical. Is that for you, you Volker, to start? Do you want to? I don't know yes, go on. Full ahead. <laughs> <laughs> maybe try with the top, uh, top six of the, or the, I don't know. The, Wait, where you'd like to start with those? <laughs> Shall I choose uh, my uh, by myself, or you yes, do you want yes, to pick or one? If you want to talk about this, uh, this this issue of uh, are we just going to send more data because we're using electronic logbooks now? Is it uh, which isn't necessarily helpful? Is that something you've thought about? Or? Uh, I, I just want to have one one uh, made clear. So we are certified according to uh, ISO two one seven four five. So it's not only compliant, we are certified um, with a DNV class or by DNV class. And to pick one more, which I just saw, uh, in interface with VDI is also possible. And these are the easy questions. And I just see a lot of popping up. So maybe just, Carl, just pick one for me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so John Owen is asking, it's not about interfacing to VDRs, is this just a VDR on steroids? So, you know, what's the advantage of electronic logbook over a VDR? I suppose the data is much easier to get at. Is that the main answer, do you think? Um, 
Uh, yeah, partly right. Um, the the VDR is uh, not an, uh, it's not so easily access accessible like a logbook in a cloud. But um, the VDR is only taking um, information from data and not um, from a decision. So if you put in, for example, I, I, I will give an easy example. If you decide to change the course as officer, you put it in the logbook. And this is not be seen in the VDR at the moment. Okay. Um, Alexander is asking if any shipping company used it. Is, is that a commercial question for you, Andre? You want to take that one? I can take take on this one because Volker will be quite busy with the others. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so um, already for quite a long time, um, um, our e logs are running on uh, different uh, vessels, um, also from dis different segments, um, and uh, we use it as really as a key part of our development uh, to learn from the feedback, uh, learn from. Um, from the installation, et cetera. And that's why it's so easy, by the way. Yeah, so, um, and, and um, yeah, those custom, uh, those clients where we tested it, um, uh, they, they simply become uh, uh, customers um, uh, sooner or later. Um, but so, you know, right now they are still, um, um, yeah, um, um, still in operation while we are talking and they use the electronic logbook. You don't want to mention the client names, or, yeah. Yeah, and as you know, and um, uh, we don't want to do that. Okay, well, so Volker, well, so I don't know, if these questions, we can have quick answers. Cybersecurity, I suppose that's probably quite a long answer, showing an export example, that's how the data comes out. I suppose it goes up to the cloud. Um, John Owens, more of a comment about uh, handwritten logs that which are too tidy. Um, Ricardo Tromba is picking up your validation uh, workflow. I think you've worked on ships, you've probably got... <laughs> <laughs> who's who's approving the data um george is asking for a customer reference list i was, we've got that one to know um e-log on ships how do you deal with iec 6162 which is integration with navigation systems i looked at it do you do that yourselves or leave that to the shipping company id department is there something uh, to be honest this is uh, this is a good question um so the the input by the user is done by um um, hardware or devices um, which um, which are not in our hands. So um, this uh, this is uh, the security um, matters is has to be done by the company. Uh, and the rest of the connection is uh, there's um, the, the or the let's say the 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 logbook itself or the, the gateway PC. There um, the cyber security topics are covered by the, the ISO 21745. Just one addition, um, um, interfaces not related to, to the IT, but uh, to, for example, integrated uh, navigation system. That's of course something where we um, support or which, which we bring uh, with us when it's um, a race and unshits uh, bridge, of course. Okay, there's an interesting question from Siva. Is there entries from the vessel owner? Which would they be available for crew? I don't know why you'd want a vessel owner to put entry in a logbook, but is that something, Volker, you want to share? And no, we, we, we decided not to do, like, uh, do it, um, to strictly forbid any um, uh, access from, from outside. Uh, so you can only read out from outside. The input is only uh, possible from, from, let's say, inside, from, uh, not from, from, from the cloud. Okay, Stella is asking what happens if a vessel is not connected to the internet? Do you have a backup system? Um, yeah, there are two uh, hard disks in, uh, in this uh, gateway PC which uh, lock the data and the, the cloud is only uh, additional backup and the additional functionality for uh, further usage of the data. Oh. Sarab is asking, are the e-logbook connector sensor data from the engine room? Uh, not yet, so, but uh, planned soon. Okay, and the same with the Lessia. Do you support sensor data from the, yeah, I guess it's something to do technically, but uh, quite hard. Um, yeah, Bjorn is also asking for your, oh, okay, can you edit the details? So can companies ad adapt the software themselves to, for their own procedures? I guess you can, it's a flexible system, is it? Or, uh, a very nice question. Um, at the moment, we, we have a, let's say, one solution, 
but uh, also in our um, schedule we're planning for um, make it possible to 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 give the user the chance to adjust the entries and the reports well um Bharat Nayar is asking an interesting question. I find these electronic logbooks not intuitive anymore, and you're still relying on the officer of the watch for data entries. And there's a lot more requirements increased due to SIA, which uh, I'm not quite sure where we're going with this. Um, well, I guess it's just, well, I guess it's talking about the flexibility of it and how, how to make it easy to use. I guess it's not as easy as uh, just giving people a computer, and I guess you have to design it for the specific cases. I suppose that's the, that's the important thing here, isn't it? I think just look at Bharat's question. Um, we've done a, well, yeah. Walid is asking, are we saving coordinates automatically with the e-log? I think we are, if you're integrating with a navigation system, aren't we? Yes, yes, that's possible. But also you can, of course, uh, put in a manual uh, position uh, as well. Okay, um, Andre, do you want to take Garika's question about your, your marketing strategy? Are you selling directly for- Yeah, yeah, yeah I, can, I can spend a few words. Um, so, um, yeah. Most of the business that we are doing uh, is together with our partners, like uh, distributors. And that's also our main um, strategy um, here. So um, if you um, contact uh, one of our partners in the next, uh, because we are just about to launch, um, we, we are still um, in the training uh, process of the partners. Um, yeah, um, that, that's definitely possible to, um, to, to go to your uh, partner of choice. Um, but also, we also have, of course, some direct relationship with um, shipping companies. That's also possible. But main, main, um, yeah, main uh, marketing is through our partners. Okay, so got some uh, questions here about the reporting. So, Hawido Chu is asking: any alarm if you emit something? Bjorn Fossum is saying automatically generating reports. Vitter is asking, do you have audio and image recordings? I guess you can do all of these. It's just a sort of question of setting it up, I suppose, isn't it? Or what people want. Yeah, the, the audio record is uh, interesting. Um, it pops up from time to time. We have not so far. Um, but of course, it's uh, we can think about uh, such a, a entry possibility that you don't have to put in, that you tell it like Alexa or whatever, but uh, so far not. And uh, to, just to be, to be clear, we are, we are on, a, on the beginning of a journey. We, we are planning to, to improve this product by feedback from our customers. Well, so while it is asking about IMO, I guess that's probably quite a long answer about that one. Maybe we won't be able to cook. Kaushik is asking about Costs, uh, maybe that's confidential. Um, Walid, I don't know what vessel on a, I don't know what that term what means. I can, oh. What I can say about the cost, um, I, I can't uh, give you the, um, the numbers here, but um, um, as a benchmark, of course, uh, the paper locks uh, are there. And uh, we have reasonably priced, um, um, considering, of course, the benefit that a digital solution um, brings on the table. Um, yeah, I want to, to just. Uh, point or to take this this IMO question. Um, the IMO is not uh, not let's say the problem um, as far as Solas allows electronic logbooks in general or electronic record keeping. Um, it's a it's a question of flag states. So uh, if the flag uh, allows electronic logbooks and there are various um, uh, solutions by the flags to deal with this topic. Oh. So uh, yeah, Ye Young is asking about the blockchain. I think you mentioned, yes. Um, Sam is asking about Marpol. I guess that you can handle that as well. Ilya is asking about connection to Noon reports. I think you probably can do that. And I don't understand what is question about, I don't know if you, <laughs> if you know what, <laughs> I don't know if honor is a mistyping there. So do you want to do any comments on these ones? And then we'll do the next poll if you'd like. Um, yeah, uh, Marpol, so other logbooks are um, in our pipeline. So uh, all the Marpol logbooks, garbage, uh, oil record, and so on. So it's coming soon, hopefully, as soon as we can. And um, what was the other? Um, well, yeah, connection to the new reports. Um, yeah, we have the new report and um, our uh, 
cloud is um, is able to um, to connect with other um, cloud solutions. So it's possible to 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 exchange information, but um, this need to be specified. Okay, so should we go to uh, the poll D for R? Do you want to bring up the uh, the last poll? So now we're asking about which of this functionality is going to uh, you're going to find most interesting. So um, you can select as many as you like, but uh, which ones would particularly get you to do this? So uh, automated filling in. So the thing is uh, automatically putting data in for you. You can have a pre-written template smart text block so you can just do control b and it will say something you enter every time you can uh, fill this in on smartphones or anywhere you are you can have email alerting when a part of this isn't filled in properly and you can have an approval workflow where somebody else is asked to approve on what somebody else has done so you can select them all if you like but uh if there's any uh particularly would get you to take interest in this um you ready to show the answers for our do you think still got answers coming in oh very good well, yeah, if, if there's some questions in the chat, if you want to sort of repost them in the Q&A box, it's a bit easier for us because people can, <laughs> there's just one or two questions in the chat there. Yeah. Certainly. Um, I could read them out if you want. No, it's okay. Well, we, we can go to the results of the poll now, I think. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So filling in from smartphones from anywhere and automated filling in. Yeah, just making it much easier to fill in this logbook. Do you want to keep those results up when we see Volker and Andre want to give any comment on those? Yeah, um, this is uh, very good to, to hear that uh, that uh, our picture of the, of the world is fitting to this um, because we also think automated uh, filling in is uh, really important. And um, also the to to use to to make it possible to to uh, fill the logbook from from anywhere on the ship, of course, not outside the vessel. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you have also some comment on that. Um, another conclusion is could be um, that uh, that there's a variety of um, benefits for, from the, from an electronic um, version of a logbook and. Uh, even though not everybody, for example, has um, uh, has highlighted email alerting, but for some of uh, some of them, um, some of you, it is really interesting. So, and that's something that, of course, an electronic um, solution uh, brings with that more flexibility, and um, also according to you know, to customer requirements or customer needs. So, that's my another take take off from here. Oh, that's great. Well, there's a, we've got eight, eight minutes left. We've got a couple, a couple of questions. Siva is asking in the Q&A, we talk about the, uh, how often are we updating the, the cloud? Is it uh, immediately as people in it or is it uh, on a certain uh, schedule and uh, how much data do you need? And then uh, in the chat box, Chara Lambos is asking about, so flag states want official stamps in the logbooks, <laughs> particularly Greece. <laughs> what do you do about that? Um, Ricardo is asking about oil record book entries uh is that a, is that for uh Volko, do you think to take those two yeah the, the flag states um it, it's uh, qu quite right with the stamp um so um i give an example cyprus for example um they uh they have clear instructions how uh, what they expect from an electronic logbook and um, to, to use our logbook on a, a Cyprus flagship, um, the owner need to uh, approach the flag with our product and um, uh, ask for approval by the flag. This would be like a stamping, um, but um, fortunately, it's not 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 all flags are like this, and there are also some uh, uh, Denmark, for example, they just accept electronic logbooks. In general, you can use it on a Danish flag vessel directly. Yeah, there's questions about yeah. different sort. Oh, go on, Andrew. I just wanted to add it's really individual uh, um, um, assessment by flag. Of course, we are supporting already a couple of them, but for others, there are really different procedures um, where we dived into and where we also can support. But it's uh, that would be another webinar just to talk about flex, I would say, uh, for electronic logbooks. Well, um, 
Sam Deluge is asking about logbooks that can't be automated. He thinks radio port ballast operations can't be automated. I don't know if that's a, and then a Ricardo in the chat is asking about oil record books. How do you make them uh, error proof? So I suppose it's all technical problems. I suppose it's all solvable once we get the market interest. Is that the uh, rough answer do you think of? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, the ballast, the ballast, uh, um, yeah, ballast situation is a uh, cargo logbook is an interesting uh, question how to automate this one um of course you can integrate um levels of, of tanks and so on um but this is what i mean with we need we still we still need the operator we still need the mate on on board um and uh, he is actively putting in information and when the when when it's connected directly to to the digital data which is there it's easier to for for later use um uh, ashore Jen Strober has just asked which flags have already approved this i guess you said the whole webinar on flags maybe <laughs> <laughs> just got five minutes left maybe this i don't know if you want to uh... Uh, yeah we, we have we have a few like germany and uh, denmark i said uh, singapore yeah do you want to but give a last like, comment on cybersecurity? I mean, I don't know why somebody would want to hack into this. It's not a, but uh, there's been a couple of questions on cybersecurity. I, I suppose it can be as secure as any other software system. It's quite easy to, is that something you've got into depth? Into? Yeah, I mean, um, we, uh, the logbook itself, like I said, it, um, cannot, it's not providing um, any access Except, except of read out from outside from from the cloud so this is one hard barrier and the rest um, of course you have to follow standard cybersecurity procedures to to make this safe like uh, other um, uh, solutions wow well, that's fantastic well there's a 35 questions plus more in the chat and uh, <laughs> four polls has been a uh, great so i don't know you want to give a final word for a minute or so and then uh... One yeah, so I'm, I was uh, really uh, impressed by so many participants um, and also by the um, quality of the questions um, and, and feedback. So that was, that was uh, to my view, uh, really impressive. And um, yeah, so I, I hope we can continue uh, some of the discussions uh, because um, I apologize because for over some questions we were just uh, going over very briefly, but there's a lot of potential to um, to dive into those questions. So um, you can, uh, of course, uh, contact us, as I said, at any time. And it was really, really fun. And thank you, Carl and Farah, for organizing this. So thank you, thank you very much. Okay, well, so pass back to Farah for the closing words. Cheers. So that's all from us right now. And we hope you've enjoyed today's webinar. Thank you to our guest speakers, Volker van Zell and Andre Povilait from Raytheon and Schutz and to all our viewers. We've been your hosts for today, Farah and Carl from Digital Ship. For those of you who wish to view this event again, or if you have any more questions, keep an eye out for our email where you can keep in touch and also the link on YouTube, which we will be sending to you soon. We hope to see you at our next event on the 26th of October, where we will be discussing improving voyage and vessel performance by advanced analytics with our guest speakers from Vessel Performance Solutions and with the news. For more details on our other future webinars, you can check out our website, webinars.thedigitalship.com. Have a fantastic weekend ahead from all of us at Digital Ship and goodbye. Bye-bye.